Hello, my name is Matthew, and thank you for joining the final video in our Print to Perform series, where we'll be talking about reverse engineering freeform shapes within SolidWorks. Typically, these parts are a combination of features made using several spline lines or were hand carved originally and formed from there. This makes it tough to reverse engineer them if you want to make a new tool or a new version of the part that was created long ago. Thankfully, new technology has come along to help make modeling these freeform shapes much easier using 3D scanners and reverse engineering software. With a scanner, we can capture the shape of a part and using software to create surfaces from these freeform shapes, we can add in prismatic features and whole locations to make a properly fitted feature. This is called hybrid modeling. And in this video, we'll go over how hybrid modeling can help with creating complex shapes as dummy solids while maintaining key locations that need a prismatic feature. We'll be using a gas tank from a motorcycle as our part, captured using a Creaform HandyScan 700 and the Geomagix for SolidWorks add-in for helping with reverse engineering. Geomagix for SolidWorks allows you to import in complex mesh files into SolidWorks itself, letting you use several extraction tools to get pieces of information, and then using SolidWorks' normal modeling tools to help with sketches and cuts. The first thing we have to do, however, is cleaning up our mesh to remove any noise data and fill in any holes. Within the add-in, we have a repair tool that will look for outlier and infolded in sections of our mesh and remove them. We can see these areas being highlighted red, and when the repair finishes, some are gone or have been adjusted. On the upper area of the tank, there looks to be a couple of holes as well. We'll use the fill holes tool to patch them up so we have a nice single surface on the top part of the tank. With our scan cleaned up, we can begin our modeling process. Now for this project, we don't want to adjust the overall shape of our tank. We may want to make it bigger or smaller, but the shape will remain the same. Since we won't be making any major geometry changes, we'll consider the tank's shell to be our freeform shape, or what we're going to extract our dummy solids from. Dummy solids are solid bodies, surfaces, or enclosed solids that are imported in and can't be adjusted beyond the basic shape manipulation tools. They can be machined, however, so they are great for cutting other solids or using with a combination of prismatic modeling features. Within the freeform extraction tool, we can highlight that outer tank shell using a smart selection or manually selecting areas with the lasso or paintbrush tool. The freeform surface will be generated based off of our selected triangles. We can go further within our options to adjust the accuracy of our surface if we want to extend it out further and the method of how our surface is being created. We can see that while project is enabled for the method, our surface preview is pretty simplistic and not following the true shape of the part. So we will change that method until we find one that works well. In this case, free gives us a better preview of the surface to match our tank. Clicking on accept, we will see that a newly created surface body within our feature tree is appearing, with no additional features associated to that one, indicating that it's our dummy surface. We can hide our mesh and see that this surface does a pretty good job at representing our tank's outer shell. While the surface does look well, it doesn't end exactly where we want. It seems to be extruding further past the tank than where it's been cut. We can begin adding in some prismatic features to trim away this freeform surface to better match the tank's actual bottom face. Since this part is aligned to a global coordinate system, we will use one of our planes to create a sketch feature that follows the underside of the tank. With the mesh shown, we can use it as a reference to ensure that our sketch feature properly matches up to the actual part. Once a sketch has been made of the bottom face of the tank, we can use our extrude tools to extrude a new surface past our freeform one. Using SolidWorks' trim surface tools, we can select on which surface faces we want to keep, and since the extruded surface passes through all sides of that freeform one, we can stitch everything together as a single solid body. Once that command has been done, we can see that we now have a single solid body of our tank with the freeform top and prismatic underside. We can use the same principles to remove this freeform dome on the other side of the tank. Using the freeform extraction tool, we can highlight the dome to generate a surface to cut away from our solid body.
After highlighting the dome, we can see that our preview looks pretty good, but that this newly created surface doesn't completely go through our parts solid body, which can cause an issue with the SolidWorks' surface trim tools. To work around this, we'll simply extend the side of the surface that doesn't go past our solid body. And once the, all the sides have been properly extended through the solid, we can use our surface cut tool to create a dome pocket. Now, let's check and see how well our solid body looks compared to our mesh at this point. It's important while working with freeform shapes to verify that your surfaces you're extracting properly match up to our scan and generate new surfaces and adjust accordingly if not. Using the deviation analysis tool, we can select on our solid body and compare it to the mesh. We can see that most of the freeform shapes are green, which is really ideal. For areas that are red or blue, we could re-extract a new surface or adjust our sketch features accordingly to make our solid body better match our scan data. With the bulk of the tank now modeled up as a solid, let's start adding in some additional prismatic features for mounting the tank. First, let's start with this extrusion on the bottom side. We can generate a new plane at the top part of this feature to be used for our sketches. I'll change my selection tool to a paintbrush selection so I can choose exact locations that I want to generate my plane from. Our extractions are generated from an average of our selected triangles. Once the plane has been made, we can use the cross-section tool to generate a spline profile to use as a reference for our sketch features. We want to choose a distance that gives us a good representation of the shape of the part, something that's not on the fillet itself or has other extruded features. Once the reference spline has been made using the cross-section tool, we can edit the sketch and add in prismatic proper features such as lines and arcs to create our sketch profile, using the reference spline as snapping points for our sketch features. Just like a normal sketch, we can extrude this out and add in a draft to ensure that it matches our 3D scan. Finally, we'll add in some new fillets, hiding our solid body so we can see how these fillets overlay onto our mesh, and also some new mounting locations using the mesh as a trace reference for their position. We'll repeat this for the top side of the tank where we have a cylinder cut. While we could create a new sketch and extrude them, the circles and cylinder locations are all at different heights and locations, which will make it a little tough to do with a single sketch profile. Instead, we'll use the extract cylinder tool to ensure that our cylinder we make is in the exact location we want with the proper diameter. Within the extraction tool, we can also designate a specific surface to be used as the normal plane for our cylinder helping with consistency throughout our part by making sure that that cylinder is extruded relative to a proper surface. We can use the Boolean tools to remove our newly created cylinder from our freeform tank solid body.
If we, however, had our solid body shown while extracting up the cylinder, you can see we have a new option enabled to allow us to cut our results. So we don't have to use the Boolean commands, it will just create a single extrude cut for our second cylinder. For the remaining hole locations and walls, we can go back to our prismatic modeling methods and create exact sketch features and extrusions at ideal locations. Zooming around the part, we can see that our tank is starting to come together really well. We now have the bulk of the part modeled up and we can start adding in exact prismatic features in locations that we want. By using the freeform surface tools, we were able to create accurate surfaces to drive the bulk of the modeling process, but using prismatic features and sketches to have proper locations for mounts, depths of the tank, and so on. From here, we can add in some additional fillets to the solid body or shell it, since it's just like any other solid body inside SolidWorks. We can even go back to our deviation analysis tool and we can check how these newly created prismatic features match up to our scan and adjust accordingly. Being able to combine freeform surfaces and prismatic features can make modeling something that may seem impossible possible. We can get the best of both worlds by having the surface that represents our key geometry and adding in proper cuts and extrusions where needed to make a solid body. I hope you found this video helpful on the hybrid reverse engineering process within SOLIDWORKS. We can now use this gas tank in any future design for our airbox since we have a solid body SOLIDWORKS part file now. Please leave a like and subscribe to our channel for more videos on SOLIDWORKS, reverse engineering, and other helpful tips for engineering softwares.